another video, folks. Uh, this is <clears throat> kind of in the vein of the Guitar Tips videos, but a little bit more involved, so um, they'll probably be longer than the usual five minutes of pop uh, Guitar Tip videos. But I want to talk about something that I've always found pretty important to me and the progression of my guitar playing, and that is playing what we call chord melodies or harmonizing melodies on the guitar. And uh, piano players do this all the time. It's just a pretty common thing, but guitar players, I don't think, think about it as often, unless you went to, like, study jazz. Um, but I use this, uh, these concepts in, in rock and country and funk and whatever style, and it's, it's all about knowing how notes work with each other, and it's really um, the understanding of harmony. And so we're going to talk with it, uh, about it today with a pretty simple tune, a Miles Davis tune that a lot of new jazz players will learn called Freddie Freeloader and it's a pretty pretty good one to start with because it has some um, it's a blues but it has some interesting chord changes at the end one chord change in particular that's a little uncommon which is this guy right here and so uh, we're going to talk about that but we're going to talk more specifically how the notes of the melody work with the chords that are dictated on the lead sheet. And for this, if you don't know your chord voicings very well, uh, that's where you should start first, is understanding your chord voicings, because I'm going to talk about that quite a bit. That's kind of uh, the meat and potatoes of harmonizing things. And so if you don't understand your chord voicings really well, like say for this first chord, which is a B flat 7, if I play a stock B flat 7 like here in the 6th position fret. I should know that this is my root, my fifth, my flat seven, my third, my fifth, and then another root on the top. Um, or this one, which is root, fifth, flat seven, third, and then fifth on the top. If we don't know those basic elements, this video is probably not for you yet. And so you want to get a good understanding of chord voicings, whether that's from a video of mine or somebody else's videos that are teaching you uh, more about the instrument, the guitar, and understanding how harmony works on the guitar. So if you don't understand your voicings yet, like I said, this video might be a little bit above your head. Uh, this is a basic chord melody or harmonizing video, and I'm going to plan to do some more advanced ones as well. And so if you're having a hard time with this one because of the voicing issue and not knowing your chord shapes, you want to do that first. And so we're going to talk about how to put this together. And so first thing I do is I typically look at the chords and make sure I just know these changes, even if they're just stock chord shapes like B flat 7, E flat 7, B flat 7, and we got F7 over here, and then E flat 7, and then A flat 7, which I can play here or maybe up here, depending on the melody. Whenever We'll have to look at the melody in a second. And then I have my second ending, which has basically the same things, but a typical resolution for the blues, which is the B flat 7. So this is really the only oddball right here, this A flat 7. That's an uncommon chord for a 12 bar blues. Anyways, let's get to the melody. So if you don't read music um, as a guitar player, I highly recommend you get, get some music reading chops. There's a lot of guitar players in the world that can't read music. And if you're planning on being like a working musician as a guitar player, it definitely helps to know how to read. Uh, it's just an added tool to your your tool belt and uh, so spend some time with that it really does help in certain situations but uh, for this we're gonna need some basic reading skills so you don't have to really be able to sight read it but what you do need to know is know what these notes are and so like this is a G and that's an F and we need to know that because we're basically taking these melody notes and finding what the relationship is between the harmony that is described right here which is a B flat 7 so a G in relation to B flat is the sixth or in this case probably the 13th and that's a, an example of an extension and so uh, check out a video on extensions if you don't know what extensions are but it, in a nut, in the nutshell uh, explanation is basically anything past the octave and so uh, an easy way to find what the extended version of something is is just add seven to it so the extended version of one is the octave which is eight the extended version of note two of the scale would be nine and note three's extended version would be 10 and so on and so forth. And so the extended version of six is 13. So now what I could do is find my stock chord shape and look at what I have. And without altering this too much, I can just take my, my fifth that's up here and replace it with the sixth. 
because I know my voicing is one, five, flat seven, three, five, and I can replace that five with a six. And uh, you could do replace either since we have a doubling, but typically it's important to keep your melody in the top voicing, so I wouldn't really want to voice my melody down here. That's not, not going to sound very appropriate, but I can voice it here. And going to the, the, the next motion, the next note in that, is an F, which is back to the fifth. That's the fifth. So I basically just put my pinky on the sixth and lift it up to my stock shape. And then it does it again right here. And now we have a, the note C and the note B flat, but this is no longer in relationship to B flat because the harmony has changed. So we have to relate the note C to E flat. So C is also the 13th of E flat. So it does the same thing, it basically just transposed it. So it went C to B flat, which is the sixth and the fifth of E flat. So you could, on the guitar, take advantage of these, you know, nature of being able to move a shape and go here, and that would get the job done. You could also find another voicing. Here's a 13 voicing on the fifth string root for E flat. And it happens to be in the same general location as our previous one, which is kind of nice. It also has slightly different voicing, so that kind of changes the tone a little bit instead of just taking the exact voicing and moving up to the new key. I think it's nice to have a little bit of variation in the voicings that we choose. And so that's over B flat, you do that again, and then you move to E flat, and then back to B flat with the same thing, 13 down to 5, or 6 down to 5. Now we have this A flat note, which is the flat 7, and that's going to approach into this A natural on the first ending, which is now over New Harmony, we're over the F chord, which is an A over F, which is the third. So now I need to do a, uh, F7 voicing with the third in the top. And so I don't want to play all the way to, to the top string because that would give me the fifth and that kind of uh, changes my melody. So going from here, this B flat before the first ending, right here, we have, and then we get this single melody note, A flat, going into A, and I would just slide my pinky up, and then grab that A flat again as I'm approaching the G, but the G is now over E flat, so that's an, the third of E flat, so we can use that same voicing. And then the F, which would be the ninth, I can either pick up this finger or I can change to a, an E flat nine shape. And then we get a G flat, and this is the oddball. And this is kind of a push. This is this G flat, even though it's in the measure of E flat seven, is actually more related to the next chord, which is an A flat seven. So it's actually what we call a push, where the new chord happens oftentimes on the end of four. And so the G flat is going to be the flat seven of A flat. And so I can use that same voicing I used earlier for the B flat, which had the A flat in the top. I know I'm saying a lot of notes. So this is, once again, if you don't know your scale shapes and your chord shapes, this video is going to go over your head. You can soak it in, but um, I'm going to go kind of quickly so the video is not, you know, 25 minutes long or something like that. And you can always rewind. That's the cool thing about YouTube. And so here's the G flat over the G flat melody over the A flat harmony, which is the flat seven, which is the same as the A flat melody note over a B flat. So it's the same voicing. So this little turnaround right here from the B flat, we get there's the F, and then approaching the E flat, and then A flat seven, and then we get back to the top. We repeat it, and a lot of people make this put this on the end of of two instead of on three the way it's written it's a little bit more hip a little bit more syncopated like okay and then we move in cool we got that and then back to the b flat and then for the second ending it does the same thing right there and then you could right here we could grab this chord, which is a sharp nine chord actually, because they have this written as an F sharp, even though it's, this is the same as that, but it's not acting as a push anymore because this is not has nothing to do with this next harmony other than this melody is approaching the next melody note. 
And so this actually turns this into an uh, E flat seven sharp nine, which is the Jimi Hendrix chord, colloquially referred to as the Jimi Hendrix chord. And then we get back to the our typical thing. So at uh, a normal tempo, we might get something like this for the whole tune. Same thing. And now here comes the second ending. And that would, oh, and I also did a smaller voicing. And I'll talk about that in a second. So now once you get these stock voicings, and understand where they're going. Uh, you can either change them, they don't need to be the same the whole time. Uh, you can reharmonize things, which I'm not gonna talk about in this video, but you can basically add different chords that aren't written uh, in the lead sheet. Um, and then you can look for just cleaner voicings. Uh, sometimes, especially in the world of jazz, these stock voicings, they have a, a, a less jazzy feeling and more of like a 1950s or like early rock feeling, early rock and roll feeling, because of this fifth in the bottom. It's too too chunky, and so I tend to remove that a lot. I don't even play it. And so... It's a little too, too cluttered down there in the low end of the guitar. Like that. Which might sound fine for like... stuff like that but for jazz stuff it, it gets a little too muddy um, you can also find different voicings of 13 that's a very dense voicing very jazz oriented and so you can do that which really kind of change changes the color of things um, you do the same thing in E flat and then back to this one because once again, I'm keeping my 13, which is my melody note in the top. And then you can do this voicing, which is the same as this. I just happen to be over here. And then something like this, which has a simple melody, you can add a little of the notes in between. So there's different things that you can do to start adding things. And I was just kind of fooling around with other things in between the melody notes. And so start off and get the uh, get the chord melody down and go listen to the recording as always. Listen to how they do it because uh, you don't always have to harmonize things with full uh, chords like that. You can do some intervals. And if you're playing with the full band, this might be a more appropriate way to harmonize something. So have fun with that and really dig into your chord voicings. It really helps you understand the neck and how to just be a, um, a self-sufficient guitar player where you're, you're learning how to read and harmonize melodies similar to what a piano player would do. A lot of piano players get this training and, and whether from being at a young age, uh, they take in private lessons or something or they go to academy for music and they get a lot of harmonization training more than guitar players do. And so... Uh, that doesn't mean that guitar players can't do it. You just got to work a little bit 
uh, in it. You got to work a little bit harder at it in certain ways, but um, it's only working at it harder because it's less common to do as a guitar player. It's not any harder work than piano players are doing. Piano players know this stuff. They know that that's the 13th of this chord and that's the 5th of this chord and so on and so forth. And just guitar players get uh, either complacent or lazy with their playing. and Or, they, or they're or they kind of afraid of it because it's a little bit challenging. So don't be afraid of it if that's the case. Just take it little by little. Study your voicing, study your neck, study your harmony and, and you'll you'll pick it up a lot faster than you think you will. And uh, it really does open up the neck and it creates a, a whole new instrument for you, really. It t turns the instrument into something that's highly capable uh, in the harmony world. And so it's pretty cool. So have fun with that and I'll see you guys on the next one. And hopefully you guys like these harmonization videos. I'm going to do a couple of them and start doing a little bit more difficult uh, chords and melodies uh, for different standards. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. So have a good rest of your day.